How's everybody doing? Jay Elson, Todd Lee, inside the Sanford Coyote Sports Center, talking Coyote basketball, where uh, USD coming off a big win Sunday afternoon against Purdue Fort Wayne, 87 73. And that's big, especially because the Mastodons, of course, came into that game uh, as the last unbeaten team in the Summit League at 4 0, Todd. And afterward, you told our Kelly Stewart that, you know, you had told your guys previous uh, to the game starting. This was our biggest game of the year. Why'd you take that stance? Well, I felt that way uh, for a couple reasons. One, uh, we, we've had to battle through these injuries. We lost a, a game at home to South Dakota State. Um, and in the league, we start out the league five of seven on the road. And the two home games are against the two best teams in the league, South Dakota State and Purdue Fort Wayne. So really a tough stretch for us to start Summit League play. We, we had the home game yesterday, and then we go on the road now for three straight road games. Mm -hmm. And you know how hard it is to win on the road. In any basketball conference, it's really hard to win on the road. You've got to you know, try to go in and steal wins. Um, so that is why I felt like yesterday was a must win for us. And our guys responded. Um, I was really proud of the way we played. Uh, you were working base seven, eight guys yesterday. At the start of the day, eight. Then you lose one, and Dan Jack goes down with an ankle injury very early in that game. So now you're down to seven. Uh, so given all that, I imagine what a tremendous shot in the arm in terms of confidence to be able to go out there against that team and play the way you did. Yeah, our guys should take a lot of confidence from that. And, uh, you know, we've got guys stepping up. Um, you go into that game and, and Dan gets hurt in the first minute. And then uh, Nate Robinson, who has played some, but he's a true freshman. He's just learning the game. Uh, played just three minutes yesterday. So we're, we played the game with six guys for the most part. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've done that previously, but you didn't, never, want to, never want to do that. <laughs> it is really hard. You know, and anybody picks up a foul, you know, it's like panic alert on the bench and everybody's screaming, how many fouls he, what do we have to do, you know, who do we sub in? So it, it, uh, it just changes your game plan. Now, we did a few things yesterday. We took everybody off the free throw line. We, never, we didn't want guys running back, mm -hmm. uh, limit the no amount of times they run. We, uh, we called timeouts uh, to rest guys. Um, you could see during the game that we held the ball at times just to run clock and then we'd go into a, a set with about 10 seconds on the shot clock. We wanted to rest guys during uh, the game and so we tried to do as many things possible to keep our guys fresh. It's hard to do. Tristan played 40 minutes, uh, Stan played 40 minutes, TP played 37 minutes um, and for them to battle through and beat a, beat a team like uh, Purdue Fort Wayne it's been undefeated you know beat South Dakota State by a lot uh, they they were coming in hot and we really did a good job especially defensively in the second half so you're game planning basically for freshness but on top of that you got a game plan for the opponent right and and anytime you get a matchup of a really really explosive offense like the one Purdue Fort Wayne possesses and then a very stingy defense like you guys like to play uh, those are always intriguing matchups so how did you force them to play your kind of game yesterday? The biggest thing for us was not turn the ball over, make, uh, try to make it as much a half court game as possible, make them execute in the half court so we could guard them and their concepts. And uh, we didn't do a great job of it in the first half, but in the second half we did. We didn't turn the ball over, the game slowed down. And I think one of the big keys, Jay, was we, we shot 63% in the second half. Always helps, right? It always <laughs> helps. It helps your defense when, you, when they're taking the ball out of the net and you can go down and set up your, your defense. And so as opposed to playing, and we've talked about it, playing in transition. We can't play in transition where we're turning the ball over, we're taking a bad shot, or we get, they get a long rebound and they're going. We just don't have enough guys to do that right now. Another thing that you said coming into this game, and I think a lot of it, again, has to do with that injury situation, is that you wanted to see some guys step up in terms of leadership. Got, with guys like Trey Birch Manning on the bench, you need somebody out there on the floor to really come, you know, take over being that voice for the guys out on the floor. Did, did you get that, and who did you get it from yesterday? I've been talking to Stan about, about it, you know, and he's only a sophomore, and this is really his first year playing college basketball because he didn't play last year. But I told him his role's changed. Now you're the leading scorer. You're going to have the target on your back. People are going to be looking at you. Uh, they're going to be going after you. But uh, I want him to be more vocal, be more of a leader, uh, talk to his teammates, cheer his teammates on. Every time somebody makes a good pass, make sure he acknowledges it. Before, he was just trying to figure out how to get in the rotation and play. Now, he's become our leading scorer and taking the most shots. Well, 
With that, your responsibilities change as a player, as a leader. Tristan Simpson, Tyler Peterson have been through the wars and I expect them to be the leaders and they did a great job yesterday and TP took some responsibility for some of the errors that we made uh, at halftime um, and he didn't do it in the second half. So that was great to see. Cody Kelly's always a leader for us. I thought that everybody stepped up and we got a really great contribution from Matt Johns who scored 10 points. He hit a three, went four for four from the field and then Brandon Armstrong came in and made some baskets, which he can do. Yeah, I want to talk about Johns more. Best day as a Kyle, no question about it. Specifically on the offensive end, 10 points, as you said, four of four shooting. But uh, his game has been developing in a new way, obviously, because he grew up playing point guard and now all of a sudden he's a post uh, and having to play a whole different kind of basketball. So how much progress are you seeing right now out of him? Well, what's good is he's, he's healthy. Um, he came in and he was really healthy or did a great job at the end of the summer and, and uh, when we started. And he, he was running, jumping, moving so great. And then he had a back injury. Mm -hmm. Then he had a shoulder injury. Then he hurt his ankle. I mean, he's gone through so much physically and then try to learn the game of college basketball. So you can see he's moving better, and he's, and, but he is learning uh, how to play inside a little bit, rebound, guard a post. He's not used to doing that. He's a very good passer. He's got a great feel for the game, and he is a good athlete. One of the things, you, know, you try to look for silver linings with injuries. Maybe the development of him, maybe the development of Stan Amude are the silver linings because Trey Birch Manning goes down early, Hagedorn goes down, and we don't have them. And maybe these guys got to step up, and sure. that's going to help them down the road. Well, you mentioned that three-game road trip, which is on deck now, and, and it starts Thursday night against Oral Roberts. This is a team coming off uh, kind of a rough week for them, a couple of losses on the road at Purdue-Fort Wayne and then at South Dakota State. But uh, the, the thing that really jumps out about them, and, it, and you have to pay attention to it given what happened here against South Dakota State, is they love to play the zone. It's a 1-1-3 one, one, zone, so it's a little bit different, but does that, is that a big concern for you given how, how much you struggled against the Jackrabbits with that? It is a different zone, as you said, Jay, but it, it is a zone. Now, we haven't, we haven't faced a lot of zone. Now, we played Baylor early in the year, and uh, they played the zone. Um, and that's and Paul the same. Mills is they, a Baylor guy. Exactly. Yes. So that's where he, he runs that system, and he wants to get big athletic guys, and they, they normally do. Very good rebounding team. Uh, so... We, we've got to do a good job of attacking it. Uh, we haven't played against a lot of zone this year. South Dakota State played that zone, and we, we were prepared uh, to play against the zone, but we hadn't practiced it all week. Now we'll, we'll prepare you know, as we go through. We have two days in a, in a, practice, a shoot around to prepare for it. We'll be better uh, prepared to play against it. And then from there, kind of a contrast in style. You head up to Omaha, and, and Mavericks, everybody knows, they like to play fast. And it's, it's different. Uh, their defense isn't a, you know, necessarily their calling card, let's put it that way. Um, but how do you adjust going against, you know, against a zone versus a team that wants to run up and down the floor every time they touch the basketball? Is, and how does playing Purdue-Fort Wayne help you going into maybe that Maverick game? We've got, we cannot play a really fast game right now. Um, and uh, I think the Purdue-Fort Wayne game will help our guys. We'll, we'll probably do a lot of the similar things because we're not going to have a lot of bodies uh, to make the game a little slower, make them execute in the half court, make them guard us in the half court. And uh, we, we shot 63% against Purdue-Fort Wayne. If you're going against a team that is a very good offensive team, which Omaha is, and likes to play fast, the best thing to slow them down is, one, take care of the ball, to score, and now they're taking the ball in the net, and you can get set up. That'll be, that'll be two contrasting styles, as you said. Uh, Oral Roberts is big, athletic, they're gonna play that zone, and then we go and play Omaha, and they're gonna play fast, shoot a lot of threes, shoot it quick, mm -hmm. and uh, try to get the game going up and down. So that's conference basketball, you know? Yep, all right, well, good luck to you this week, Todd. Thanks, Jay. Um, safe travels, of course, and look forward to catching up again next week. Thank you. Thank you.